discussing active filters, what we saw was that uh, any active filter will have uh, some denominator polynomial and whatever the order is, you can always write it as a product of uh, either only second order terms or first and second order terms. In some very special cases, you could uh, decompose them, uh, decompose an nth order polynomial into n uh, uh, first order terms with real coefficients. Now, it turns out that those uh, filters are not very interesting because uh, they will not have a very sharp cut off and so on. So, most of the time when you make higher order filters, you will have just one first order section and many uh, second order sections. Okay. Basically, uh, because uh, you can control the quality factor, you can control the steepness with which uh, the response falls off in the transition point. Okay. So, that is what uh, we know and so basically what we need to do know is how to make first and second order filters with that we can make anything. Okay. Now, there are some other structures where you cannot really separate them into a cascade of first and second order sections, we would not deal with them, but using the same uh, method that is uh, decomposing the equation. So, that you get a bunch of integrators you can realize them as well. Okay. So, we saw two examples first order where V naught by V i is 1 by 1 plus S by P 1 and this if you rearrange you will get ok. So, essentially the output the right hand side is written as the output of some integrator ok and the way to make an integrator is this where whatever current is going here, here you get minus i n by s c. Okay. So, essentially you have to make sure that this current here represents that linear combination. Okay. So, the more inputs you have, uh, because we will now deal with only voltages as variables, you have to convert voltages into currents using resistors. So, you can use multiple resistors and also different values. In this case, we have V naught minus V i, but let us say I this filter had again k, how would I have to change this? What would change here? You will have k times V i, right. Okay. So, you can also have gain, that is another advantage of uh, active filters. If you make just an R c filter, that is a passive R c, the D c gain will be 1, whereas here the D c gain can be more than 1, in fact anything you want. Okay. So, if you do this for instance, then essentially what you have to integrate is this. sign missing here. So, this should have been minus right. So, if this is r and this is r by k, you have to apply minus v i here and this would be v naught. Okay. Of course, this has to be minus v i because we defined v naught to be plus k times plus k by 1 plus s by p 1 times v i. Right. For now, we will assume that uh, if the transfer function is inverted, that is if you have minus it does not matter. Okay. So, this is all there is. 
if you really want plus sign in the low pass filter you have to use another uh, inverting amplifier okay and this of course is not drawn like this usually If I gave this circuit to you, you would take only few minutes to solve it because this the gain of this is basically the feedback impedance divided by the input impedance and the feedback impedance is a low pass function. Okay. So, expressions are like these are worth remembering. I mean if you have enough practice you will remember those things parallel RC uh, impedance is R by 1 plus S E R. So, now this is a low pass filter, how do I get a, yeah. Yeah, that is the, uh, we were talking about the transition band and so on yesterday. So, in the pass band let us say it is between 1 and some 1 minus epsilon and in the stop band it is between 0 and let us say delta and it has to this is the edge of the pass band this is the transition band and this is the stop band ok. So, now uh, let us say this uh, transition band is very narrow ok. So, then this has to drop down very sharply and to do that you need a higher order polynomial. So, the finally let us take a low pass uh, example 1 over d of s is the transfer function the magnitude square is of course, this is basically uh, if this is nth order this will be ok. It will be an even order polynomial with uh, uh, sorry it is a 2 nth order polynomial with only even terms ok. Now, the higher uh, the value of n the steeper you can make this roll off ok. So, it entirely depends on how much transition band is allowed and the, this is true of uh, any filter I mean you can imagine that you can uh, uh, if you have a very steep function essentially the curve that you want trying to fit is something like this right ok. If you have something very steep here you will need a much higher order polynomial to implement it. This is true of analog filters, digital filters anything. So, this is of course, a low pass filter. Now, how would you implement a high pass filter? Similarly, what can I do? Huh? Where? No, no, I, I, I could not hear what you said. What did you say? Interchange the which capacitor and which resistor? C in series in the feedback branch. In the feedback branch you want to have R and C in series, does it work? What kind of response will this give? What is the DC gain? Essentially, this uh, the output voltage is this current times this impedance. Okay. So it is the current that is flowing here into the virtual ground node times uh, this impedance. And for a high pass function, what do we need in the numerator? S, right? 
so that current should be should have some s times vi so how do we get that if i have a voltage vi and i need a current s times vi times something what should i have capacitor so okay so then what will we get what is the transfer function let's say this is minus vi so that i get rid of the minus in the transfer function what is v not by vi here what's that yeah so it's scir divided by 1 plus sc okay and by choosing the value of ca you can also adjust the gain at high frequencies right what is the gain at very high frequencies ci by c okay so and these again if you recall the very first introductory tutorial with laplace transforms and so on so at very high frequencies you can neglect this r in comparison to c so you just have instead of r and r you have c and c so again you have a zero phase shift and a gain of ci by c okay C by? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what C A C by L. Huh. Oh, L, yeah, yeah. We don't want to use L. Yeah, we don't want to use an inductor. You meant that we don't want to use inductors. What is the transfer function you will get in this? What kind of filter is this? It is high pass, right? Yeah, actually it is high pass, uh, zero gain and that. Actually that is, uh, I mean, that kind of uh, makes sense because uh, if you have a function h of s, okay, and, and it does something like that. S uh, goes from zero to infinity. You have a function one by S. What will the response look like? Whatever is at zero will go to infinity. Whatever is at infinity will come to zero, right? So it will do that. So that's uh, of course a standard way of making a high pass into a low pass and vice versa. So if you replace all capacitors in a circuit by inductors and inductors by capacitors, you will get this type. This is fine. I mean, this works. The only thing is, we don't want to use inductors here. That's why we don't use that. Now, the most general form of a first-order filter uh, transfer function is known as a bilinear function right so how do we how can we get it from the our circuit is it possible how huh? in series with like this parallel yeah what is wrong with this will this work or not i mean, I mean this has a dc gain of 0 so if you want some dc gain it doesn't work but uh, you can also do this and then uh, you can do something like that. 
similarly you can use like uh, c in series with r and so on so you can get more complicated transfer functions from this also okay you will only have real uh, zeros and poles but uh, you can have multiple branches in parallel here multiple branches in parallel there and each branch can have c's and r's in series if you wish okay so you can get you can uh, you can get more complicated transfer functions but you will not get complex poles from this okay whatever you do you will only get uh, because essentially if we have z1 here and z2 there the transfer function is z2 by z1 or minus z2 by z1 okay now however you arrange resistors and capacitors to form z2 i think you know this right can you get complex poles from a circuit having only resistors and capacitors only resistors and inductors no so you have to have both capacitors and inductors to have uh, complex poles so in this case you won't get that but you can get uh, higher order stuff also but only with real poles and zeros okay and that is sometimes useful this type of stuff uh, to get this and even the other variant that was suggested to get something like this this is eventually high pass the dc gain is zero but you will have a zero there okay at very high frequencies uh, it becomes equal to the resistor right the capacitor becomes so short so these things are used many times when uh, i mean within uh, control loops uh, in fact we use something like this in the control loop of the dc dc converter right we had only an integrator we had used uh, some circuit like this in the control loop of uh, a dc dc converter there we had only made an integrator but uh, sometimes you may need additional poles and zeros to stabilize it that is you want to tailor the loop gain so that you get all the good qualities that you want phase margin and so on so you can add like for instance you can have a zero here you can have some other pole there and so on and then try to compensate it okay so uh, i don't know in the lab in the dc dc converter did you have something like this or only an integrator only an integrator okay yeah so you could use something more complicated the advantage of using something more complicated with zeros is that you could get a higher bandwidth that is higher unity loop gain frequency and still have the system to be stable okay i mean this is not very useful in the sense of filter in that it doesn't sharply filter out anything but uh, a filter means i mean some general transfer function that does some useful thing for you okay so in that sense it's useful so the active filter again uh, this type of active filter by adding uh, branches to the virtual ground node you can get different transfer functions okay so we got the second order filter by looking at the transfer function of this and trying to realize the same equations right we could have got it in any other way also by starting off with the transfer function without even looking at the prototype rlc circuit and we wrote the expressions for il and vc okay so the reason to do this is the state variables have you heard the term state variables you know what they are right yes or no Uh, basically the states of the circuit okay a uh, practical way to think about it is uh, those things in the circuit to which you can assign initial conditions independently okay they are known as state variables so in a circuit in general the inductor currents and capacitor voltages are state variables these are what impose initial conditions on the uh, circuits the differential equations right so that's what they are of course if you have a circuit with capacitor loops you cannot if you have three capacitors you can only assign two and the order will be two and so on state variables are il and vc and in the active implementation the state variables are the integrator outputs the output of each integrator can also be assigned in initial condition right so uh, the way we implement the integrator 
is like this okay and you can assign some initial condition on this capacitor which is basically an initial condition on the integrator itself so each of these state variables corresponds to an integrator output in our active filter realization okay so that's how uh, we realize the active filter so if you want an nth order filter we'll have n integrators in the circuit okay so what did we do we wrote the expression for il which was this is vi this is vi minus il times r and vo itself is 1 over sc times il and we also made because the in the active implementation the integrated outputs are voltages we did that okay so we need two integrators one of the integrators has il times r as the output the other integrator has v not as the output okay and this is how we got the circuit right is it okay so what is the circuit we got yesterday what are the transfer functions so this simply says that if i l r i call it as v l so if this is and also okay one more thing was that uh, we had to have an inversion everywhere right have inversion in uh, uh, any case but anyway what we saw was that we need three op amps to implement it okay so we if this is il times r actually let me do it slightly differently what we had so now okay so the input to this is minus il times r i'll just uh, get the topology first after that we can worry about the values call it some r2 c2 this will be v0 this corresponds to the second integrator the first integrator the input is vi and minus ilr this is of course an integrator c1 and the other input has to be minus v not here we have v not okay you need three op amps to build this 
now if you uh, start with a different type of uh, inverse sign inversion you will get exactly the same circuit but maybe you would have fed the input to some other point so those things we will look at so now i mean there is no point uh, keeping these variables like il r and so on so we can simply name these resistors and use them okay yeah resistor oh yeah yeah i keep forgetting that yeah thanks Let me call this R. This is R and C. This is R divided by K. This is also R, and this is let's say R Q. Please calculate V naught by V i for this. V naught is minus one by S C R times V one. That comes from this. And from the other one, you get V one to be uh, minus this is the feedback impedance uh, divided by the currents. Or multiplying the currents going through that, so okay. So you can write it like that, or you can also think of this as another input and write it. However, you write it. These are the two equations that you get. Uh, and then if you combine them what is the expression that you get v naught by vi what do you have in the denominator so let me write this as uh, plus 1 numerator Okay. So, this is the transfer function and I mean it is in a nice form and you can sort of read off the natural frequency and the quality factor. Remember the standard form is S by omega n square plus S by omega n 1 by q plus 1 for the denominator right. So, the natural frequency is 1 by C R and the quality factor is R Q by R. Okay. And the DC gain is K. Okay. So the advantage of an active filter structure is you can control these things quite easily by changing resistors. And sometimes you may want to control these things electronically also. If you have you can uh, use resistors and switches to let us say you have a each of these is made using something like this bunch of resistors which can be switched in or out with switches then you can uh, change the gain and the you can program the gain and the quality factor of the circuit. Okay. Of course, you can also uh, derive more complicated looking expressions by calling this R 1 C 1 and this is C 2 and that is some other R and so on but uh, usually there is not much point doing that but you can do that if you wish okay 
what is v1 by vi can you tell me quickly what is v1 by vi how would you find it hmm? times minus scr yeah because i mean from this you know that v1 is minus scr times v0 okay what kind of filter is this what sort of filter is this high pass why low pass what what other answers are left <laughs> band pass clearly right i mean at very low frequencies it's zero at very high frequencies it's also zero because you get one by s okay so you also get the band pass output in the same filter structure that's also useful what is the quality factor of the band pass filter what is the quality factor r k by r it's exactly the same as the low pass filter right it's the same uh, uh, same filter after all and what is the gain at the what is the center frequency of the band pass filter what is the frequency at which the gain peaks yeah which is 1 by cr and what is the gain of the filter at 1 by cr r q by r also okay it has a gain of r q by r because what happens at the resonance this cancels that and you have only that okay you have a negative sign but it is r q by r the gain magnitude okay now uh, remember what we started off with was this r l and c and this was the output voltage v not and this is the uh, current i l this is basically v1 divided by r right or minus v1 divided by r now the voltage across the capacitor of course is low pass because the impedance of this branch increases with frequency and the impedance of this decreases with frequency okay what kind of function will the current in the inductor be this is the classic resonance circuit resonance circuit that you see right that's the first thing that they show you r l and c so what happens at resonance the current becomes maximum the current in the loop becomes maximum so at resonance the current through the loop which is also the current through the inductor becomes maximum so v1 corresponds to il so that is a band pass stuff with the quality factor being whatever the quality factor of the circuit is okay now let me take this portion of the circuit okay this part let me redraw it for you this by itself huh? v1 by yeah yeah oh, did i miss something here yeah yeah thanks so let's say this is grounded here if uh, this is v1 what is the current flowing that way what 
what is the current flowing that way? Hmm? I mean, let us say I ground this right in a sense finding the Norton equivalent current or something. Huh? There is no V over here, there is only V1. So, V1 by V1 by R square C. Yeah. So, this current is V1 by S C R square. Okay. Now, let us say I have V1 here and this is ground, I mean let me call this A and B. Now, I have to connect some element between A and B, so that I get a current in the same form. What would I connect? You understand? So, here I consider this node A and this is B which is grounded okay. and this circuit is giving me a current V 1 by A C R square. Okay. Now, I ask you, so between the same A and B, okay, I want to connect something. What would I connect, so that I get a current in the same functional form? Inductor, right. Is not it? So, if I connect an inductor, I would get the current would be V 1 by S L. So, this whole circuit is sort of mimicking not exactly, because this is a the inductor is a two terminal element, this is some more complicated circuit L of value what C R square. Okay. So, with this analogy if you redraw the original circuit that is all this green shaded stuff I replace with the inductor what will I get? Q and C. Because this is virtual grounded, virtual ground, I will, I mean, this is grounded, this equivalence can be used there also. So, essentially, the whole thing is equivalent to that, right, is not it? Of course, this uh, equivalent circuit misses out the fact that we have V naught the second integrator entirely, but essentially if you want to look at the first integrator output, it is very clear why it is a bandpass structure from this. I mean it was easy to derive the transfer function also. So, essentially what we have done is when we say we do not use uh, inductors, we realize the IV relationship using some active components. So, that is what we do right. So, that is what is possible with control sources and that analogy you can see very clearly here. So, if you look at this uh, parallel R L C Okay. What kind of impedance will it have? It will have a band pass impedance right, because at uh, low frequencies inductor is a short, at high frequencies the capacitor is a short. At resonance the reactance of the capacitor cancels the reactance of the uh, inductor and you are left with only the resistance R q. Okay. So, if you go and look at this at omega naught equals 1 by C r the inductor and the capacitor cancel out and you are left with only this right. This equivalence is true only at the resonance frequency. So, what is the gain at resonance frequency? K times R q by R which is also exactly the value that you got. Okay. So, this is how it comes to So, essentially if you look at any active filter somewhere you will have emulation of some inductor. Okay. So, it is not a two terminal like an inductor, uh, two terminal element like an inductor which you can take and connect anywhere else, but equivalently you are emulating that okay. and the advantage of this is you will get an inductor of value C times R square. Now, if you make a physical inductor it is bulky and the larger the inductance value the bulkier it is. Okay. Here by using the appropriate combination of C and R you do not necessarily make uh, you do not necessarily have to have the physical size of the inductor being proportional to the inductance value. Okay. Any questions about this? C 
So the active uh, filters offer lots of freedom, especially some things like this, which uh, emulate uh, state variables of a higher order filter, right? So you can manipulate each one uh, as you want. So this structure gives you both uh, low pass and band pass uh, outputs. How do you get a high pass output? Is it possible? No. Why not? I mean, previously for the first order case, we made some uh, small change to get a high pass, right? R by K with C. Then, where will, where will I get the high pass output? So let us say, okay, I am looking for a simpler thing. R by k divided by, I mean, you replace the input resistance by a capacitor, will that work or not? Yeah, but I want, huh. you will get a band pass, okay. See. This V i and R by k can be replaced with, I mean, let me have some z here, okay. V i and this, if I replace it with its Norton equivalent, I will get V i divided by z and z. Now, because this is virtual ground, in this case, I can neglect z here, okay. So, I only have to look at V i divided by z. So, originally I had z to be R by k, okay. So the current going in was V i times k by R, and that gave me some transfer function. Now if I replace uh, z by uh, impedance S c i, okay. Wherever I have k by R here, instead of that I would get S c i, okay. So originally I had got a band pass stuff here and a low pass there. Now, I will get a high pass here and a band pass there, okay. And so, similarly, by changing the impedance, you can uh, uh, get other transfer functions and you can also feed in inputs to the other virtual ground nodes that are available, okay. And one more thing you may want to think about is how to get a band stop or band elimination transfer function, okay. So, there. So, the band pass stuff will be of the form s by 1 plus s square s by q plus s square and uh, the band stop will have the other terms 1 plus s square divided by 1 plus s by q plus s square. Okay. So, at s equals 1, I mean if you have omega n at s equal to omega n, it will go to 0. 